Hey everyone, it's Morbid Child here with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Canon Rebel T7i. If you are on YouTube and you're just wandering around and you came across my video, um, I'm Morbid Child, so nice to meet you guys. So today we're going to be talking about the Canon Rebel T7i, like I already said. I do want to get something out of the way. I am not a tech professional. I'm not even a uh, photographer or like, I don't really know cameras too well. But as a YouTuber and someone who's been doing this for three years, I know what I'm looking for and I can at least say that I found it and this camera is great and worth every penny that I've spent on it. It really has. It's made my life a whole lot easier than ever before. So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of history. I used to film on my iPad Pro. I do want to do some comparisons but keep in mind it is an iPad. It films in HD um, but I did use some tracing camera so probably lowered the quality of the video just a tad. So I want to do some comparisons of me now like the video quality right here versus what I used to do so you guys can kind of tell apart. You know. <laughs> So that's something that I really enjoy is the quality. Right now I'm filming in 1080, 60 frames per second. I think it's the highest setting that I can put it on. So that's really good. So that's something that I was really looking into when buying a new camera. Now I do want to give you guys the price point on this camera. I paid close to the grand, close to a thousand, I'm pretty sure. It was like around 800, close to 900, and then like plus tax and everything. And then I did buy a couple extra stuff for it. But it, it was close to that number. It was like 900 something. That is a hefty price point, you guys. And I still feel it now <laughs> when I think about it. But I don't really regret it because like I've said, it's such a good camera. I love it. I'm in love with it. Even just looking at the video quality now and as you guys are watching this video, it's really good. Like, you guys, look at these wrinkles. Like, how are you? Look at this. You would not be able to see this if this camera was not that like crisp and good in HD. So the quality is there for sure. Not only that, but it does face tracking. So it tracks my face when I like move around and like knows who what my, it knows where my face is. So it keeps it in focus all always, like at all times. Like I'll cover the lens right now and then bam, it'll just focus in like really quick in a matter of seconds. So that's really good. No need to like sit down, focus the camera. Um, so I really enjoy that and I feel like it would drove me nuts had I bought a camera that needed that. Not only that, but it does have a flip out screen, which is perfect for me to see myself like, hey, like I know I'm in focus, I know where everything is. That's really good and that was another key thing. I didn't want like a camera that I had to plug in. There is Canon utility, if that's what I'm referring to, like plugging your camera in. You can set it up and you can see yourself, which is good and a lot of people like it. That wasn't something that I was looking into and that's not something that I wanted. I really didn't. I just wanted a clean flip, flip out screen. The less things the better that I had to worry about um, and it's quick, dirty, and easy. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is the microphone that I got for it. It's this, I don't even know what it is, Tackstar. It's like this knockoff mic that I bought on Amazon. It works pretty good, I'm not gonna lie, but it's not that big a difference to the Canon's mic. So it'll just help the sound. Whenever I put it on, it just helps capture the sound and you know, and not everything else going on around. But I will say that the quality, it's not that far off. It really isn't. So that could be the fact that I have a low end microphone. So my Canon microphone is that impressive to me, um, but maybe if I compared it to something else, my Canon mic might be a little lackluster. It's just that I don't really know, so. This camera also comes with a lot of settings. Um, I've not really messed too much around with the settings. I feel like it should just to like get to know it a little better, but I have not. Um, I kind of just tend to go with the auto stuff. I will say that sometimes when I am vlogging, because I also use this for my vlogging channel, that the autofocus will, the face tracking and the autofocus will kind of just get a little glitchy. I don't know. 
and the lighting sometimes too it all my like the lighting will be off and I don't know how to fix that because I am an auto so and I'm not really gonna mess with manual the manual settings I feel like I would make it a lot worse so I'm not gonna mess with that usually I just turn it off and turn it back on and it like kind of refreshes itself um, so that's what I tend to do when that happens and then last but not least I also wanted to talk about the Wi-Fi setting it's something that I've had in the past with other cameras but I never really cared about it too much until I got this camera this is when I was really like oh this feature I really like it and like I'm starting I played around a lot with it and it's been very useful especially because I don't have like a remote to just be like you know and especially when taking pictures and thumbnail pictures um, it really comes in handy and I really like that feature the Wi-Fi one also maybe really quickly want to talk about the lens it's standard kit lens I don't know how many millimeters it is but that's me zoomed in that's as far as it zooms in and this is me all the way like out and how it looks this is I mean there's not a big range you know for the lens um, it's not a wide-angle lens but it, it's it's pretty okay I like it it's pretty decent so just to compare really quick also um, I did buy it a macro lens so this is what this look like this looks like it's like a fish fishy lens like it makes everything kind of big but it's meant to give you a more wider angle just in case and you just kind of screw it onto the the lens that's just if you guys are looking in the market maybe and you're wondering can I get a, a wider lens like more in the frame you know so let's screw this on so this is what this looks like zoomed all the way out and I'm gonna put this in pop this in and see how much more we can get in the frame with this because I'm curious I'm like was this a waste of money I don't know Ooh, there we go I'm a little scared because that lens is pretty heavy on the stand so I don't know I feel like it might fall but it definitely works if you guys are thinking of getting maybe a little more screen or something you that's what you're trying to go for then I would suggest the Mac this macro lens I'll leave everything down link down below but it definitely gives you more view it does distort the image a little bit you guys can probably tell it makes it a little bit curvy because this is all the way zoomed out it's kind of like a fish lens but you just zoom it back in and you get more view so I think it definitely there's a difference there's a difference for sure so I'm gonna input those two shots together Now that's all that I have to say. Um, my final word is that this is an investment. It is pretty pricey. If you don't have the budget for it, there's a lot of alternatives. I used to use my iPad Pro and I think that it worked for what I needed to do and for where I was at that time in YouTube. So don't get discouraged. I know I used to be a lot when I used to like look at these high tech uh, camera reviews, but yeah, if you do have the budget for it, I would definitely suggest it. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Leave any comments and questions down below and hopefully I can answer them, especially regarding the camera. And give this video a like if you liked it. I will see you guys in my next one. So, bye!